Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey everybody, it's Mike and I'm back again with yet another movie review. Today, August 24th, 2022, it is Triple Feature Wednesday today. My first movie I saw of the day was, of course, the horror film Orphan First Kill. And my second film of the day was this drama mystery film that I'd never heard of before. And it was called Delia's Gone. This was a film that was written, produced, and directed by Robert Boudreaux, and it was based on a short story called Caged Birds Sing by Michael Hamlin. This film stars Academy Award winner Marissa Tomei, as well as Oscar-nominated actor Paul Walter Hauser, and of course, the incomparable, horribly underrated, dangerously talented, and good-looking Stephen James. Now, in order for me to talk about this film, I'm going to have to explain it as best as possible, and it may be slightly spoilery, giving away some beginning details, but I don't know how else I could explain this film, so consider yourself warned. But, of course, I also want to let you know as well, this is another one of those films, like I said, I'd never heard of, and it just happened to fit into my usual three movies a week formula, and this is my favorite kind of a film where I know nothing about it. I simply see the poster from the AMC app, fit the showtime in, go see it. So you guys will actually be seeing the trailer before I do, because as always, I link it in the description below. So hopefully everything I'm about to talk about was in the trailer. So here's the story. The movie tells the story of a young man who lives with his sister, Delia, and this young man, played by Stephen James, is a special needs person. He has some disabilities, and he's... Uh, and it has nothing to do with him person. Well, does, but not by choice. He's, you know, not able to really have what you would call a, quote, normal life. So he lives with his sister. She cares for him. And they live in this small remote town in Ohio. And this one time, she, you know, his sister, Stefan's sister in the film, Delia, she gets some medicine by using a gun from a pharmacist and gets him a six month supply of pills to keep himself going because she's taken it upon herself that she is going to be leaving. She is moving. She wants to go have a life of her own. And unfortunately, Stefan's character, who I'm so sorry, I can't remember what his character name was. I think it was James, but well, that's his last name, the actor, but we'll just stick to calling him Stefan. So Stefan, who is, you know, unfortunately inept, he decides that since his sister is sneaking out of the house to leave, he gets really drunk and blacks out. Well, when he wakes up the next morning, he sees his sister's dead body on the kitchen floor, and he has blood on his hands, and he willingly confesses to the murder of his sister because he thinks it's something that he's done because he's gotten drunk, and unfortunately even though he tells the court that he willingly killed his sister, he's put into a mental facility. And after some years have passed, it turns out this man, he decides to pay a visit to Stefan's character. This man, of course, is played by Travis Fimmel. And when he pays a visit, he informs him that he actually didn't kill his sister, Stefan. And so when this gets revealed, Stefan 
escapes from the mental facility and goes to try to track down who actually murdered his sister. And hot on his case is Paul Walter Hauser and Marissa Tomei, who are both police officers. And as the time has passed, Paul Walter Hauser's character is now a sheriff. Marissa Tomei is retired, but she's become a drunk and so on and so forth. And things happen. And that's the best I'm going to give you. Sorry for the just trying to explain the film without spoiling it, but I'll tell you this much. I want to say first and foremost, as somebody who is, and I mention it a lot, I am on the autism spectrum, and growing up, especially in elementary and middle school, I often was in special ed. I was in classes with a lot of kids who had special needs and I basically was that way all the way through. I could definitely see some similarities with the way Stefan's character is portrayed. Um, when I was roughly nine years old, my, my mom, my stepdad decided to put me in charter, which if you don't know, it's a mental facility as well. And a lot of the way that Stefan's character acts in the film really brought back some memories. And, um, you know, for someone, him, who is not that way, for him to pull off this sort of character, he did a pretty damn good job. Because, you know, I've grown up around people like that, and... Yeah, he did a pretty good job. And I know that the film at this moment sits with a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 4.6 on IMDb. I can understand that because I think a lot of people are probably uncomfortable by the subject matter. They're probably uncomfortable by the fact that the leading actor is playing a special needs person. And that can be a bit jarring for some people. And some people can find it insensitive. Others can find it needless or over the top. Me, I find it interesting because it is something that I did not expect from the film. And again, I had no knowledge of what I was going into. And for what it's worth and for how his character has to solve things, especially someone who is not looked at as a normal or average person, if you will, to clear his name, it makes for a very compelling film. You know, yes, the movie's very predictable, unfortunately. By the time we get 25 minutes into the picture, it's already revealed what's happened, who's done what, so on and so forth. But overall, Stephen James has continuously proved himself as someone who can carry a film. He did very, very good in If Beale Street Could Talk, I really love that. I mean, that was directed and written by Barry Jenkins, who did one of my favorite films, Moonlight, and he did a terrific job in that, Stefan. He did another good job playing uh, in a biopic called Race, performing as Jesse Owens. He was terrific in that. And he's also been in some other average movies, uh, 12 Blocks with... Uh, uh, the late, great uh, Chadwick Boseman was just kind of... Uh, I think it was called 12 Blocks. Was it called 12 Blocks? Or, or am I thinking of 21 Blocks or 12 Blocks with Bruce Willis? One of the two. Let me know in the comments, but you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, he's, he's a solid actor, and he does really good. Marissa Tomei, on the other hand, I am so sorry... This was purely a paycheck picture for her. This is one of her worst performances. I'm so sorry. I love her to pieces. I mean, we all love her as Aunt May. She did a good job, of course, in My Cousin Vinny, which won her the Oscar in 93. But this was just a paycheck picture. I could just tell. But she does good enough. But yeah, this... Uh, but yet, at the same time, not. It's, it's, it's complicated. But... 
the movie's tone can be a little uneven. You know, a lot of times Stefan meets someone in the movie, interrogates them, something happens, and then it's rinse and repeat from there. But other than that, I still think the fact that Robert Budrow, the writer, producer, and director of this film, I think he understands and grasps how a special needs person would really act in this sort of environment around everybody else who's, you know, not the same as he is. I think that the film takes a really big risk when it comes to the conclusion, which again, yeah, is pretty predictable, but I didn't mind that overall. Just because something's predictable doesn't necessarily make it bad. But overall, I enjoyed the film. It was 90 minutes long. I was never bored by it. I was kept hanging on from start to finish. Everybody did good enough. Yes, there's going to be things that are illogical and implausible and unrealistic. And there are moments where you could probably throw your head back and say, oh, come on. But there's also a moment in the film concerning some chicken wings in a Tupperware container that had me rolling. I am not going to say <laughs> what happens, but, you know, there was literally one other person in the auditorium with me, and I wish they weren't because I would have had the chance to release my laughter, but I didn't want to ruin that. Even if there's only one person in the theater, I'm going to treat it as if there's a thousand. You know, I respect fellow audience members, but... Yeah, there was a moment with some chicken wings. That's really damn funny. It comes out of the blue. But overall, this was a pretty good film. I, I liked it overall, and now I'm going to give my grade. Delhi is Gone is going to get a B-. minus. I give it the B- minus because the minus comes from Marissa Tomei's performance, and the B comes from the fact that it's an above-average film, but not quite enough to get an A, but not no, uh, low enough to get a C. I think the 4.6 is just terrible for that rating. I mean, I think the problem is so many people have become so desensitized by franchise films and action films and big movie star films that when it comes to films that have a somewhat original yet somewhat predictable film with some good actors but not big budgets, they usually tend to steer clear of those or they just seem to go straight to streaming, much like this film has. Because this, much like Orphan First Kill, has gotten a very limited theatrical release and is showing on streaming services. I mean, today is, like I said, today is Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. Both this and Orphan came out August 19th. I guarantee you tomorrow, Thursday, August 25th, is their last day in the theater, and they won't make it to the 26th. That's just usually how reality is, but we'll only find out soon enough. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my review today of Delhi is Gone. Please be sure to check this film out. It's a lot better than the reviews and the ratings give it credit for, and definitely show some love and support for Robert Budrow. He did a very good job. And of course, give some love to the incredibly talented and super underrated Stefan James. I love you to pieces. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching my review once again. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check back later tonight. I'm about to go see the movie Beast, starring Idris Elba, where he fights a lion. That'll be great. Thank you so much once again. See you guys at the movies. Bye for now.